morning. A very special welcome to you to this program. I would like to introduce to you our Bishop Christopher Emmanuel Douglas as he brings the word to you this morning. Thank you. Know who you're assigned to in this, this season and know who's assigned to you. Amen. This is not a time to, to build another church. This is a time to build the church and strengthen the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that in this season we begin to see the glory of God manifested in our lives and in our situations. May not see a literal glory cloud. Some have experienced literal glory clouds. But you may not, I may not experience a literal glory cloud as well as we may. But some things that have been locked up, it seems as though you have been going in circles for years and years and years. And it seems that every single year you say you have a New Year's resolution that this thing must go and you're going to step out and so 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 the case and you just seem to be going in circles, you begin to see, your, see God's glory in your life about that situation, that God is going to change that situation, reorder your life, replant you, reestablish you, and release you in the things that he has for you. And in this season, the Lord said... To listen to the voice of the Lord. Listen to his voice. There's a psalm. I think it's in Psalm 29. It says, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. Ascribe worship to the Lord. Ascribe glory to his name. For his voice is over your life. His voice speaks to your situation. His voice comes forth and changes. It thunders from heaven. It thunders in your situation. That's why when the voice of God is released, demons have to tremble because of the voice of the Lord. How many of us are saved? I'm afraid to fill your hand. Yet. Where is Christ? Where is Christ? In us, right? The text says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So where do you, you think you're going to speak from? If we begin to say what he says about us, we wouldn't have the problems that we have today. But we are saying the things opposite than what he says about us. And we are strengthening the situations that have us so bounded by yet. But you know, I can't make it. You know this, that. And you know, they always say I was this. And you know this. And you know, I always, oh God, I'm not sick, boy. Oh God, Monday coming and I go feel sick. And Tuesday coming and I go feel sick. And you see this sickness and I'm sick. And Wednesday is sick and I'm feeling sick and sick and sick. If you say you're sick, you will be sick till you're sick, sick, sick. Whatever you say when you pray, believe that you receive. You see, you are not speaking in your own authority. You're speaking on his authority. He has given you the authority to use his name in your circumstance, in your situation. He has given you the authority to speak. He says that you are the prophet of your own life. Touch your name and say, I'm the prophet of my own life. As you begin to prophesy, Mariah, as you begin to decree it and declare it, it shall come to pass. This is not the time to question your faith. This is not the time to be going in circles and, 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 and bad mountain and speaking all kinds of negative things. This is the time to decree it, declare it, what does say the Lord about you. And take authority and speak it, decree it, declare it, and it shall come to pass. We need to begin to speak encouragement to each other, Amen. Ah, uh, most of us, sometimes we go on the phone, Claudette, and we're only talking about how sick we were. Oh, God, that's sick, boy. And everybody, just one second. 
and I am sick. I'm going to the angel is sick. And this one's sick. I'm going to the sick. I'm sick. Everybody you need to talk about who's sick. Yeah, all right, find the sick, but let's speak health. Let's counteract the old talk and speak life instead of speaking death all the time. Let's speak encouragement. Let's speak healing. Let's speak deliverance. Most of the prayer lines we have today is because of what people spoke yesterday. Let me see it again. Most of the prayer lines that we have today is what people have spoken yesterday. You know, my father was this, right? And my father had this problem. And the doctor and them say that because my father had that problem, I don't have it too. And it's in my jeans, you know. I have a Levi. I have a Levi, Levi Strauss. So I have so much jeans that my jeans. The reality is when they did the blood test, it's yes. But you cannot allow the blood test and what is said in your blood to hinder you from living. And to hinder you from living a life. Claudette, what do we have to do? Not adjust what we eat. Change your diet. And take the tablet and take care of it. And start to live a healthy life. I talk to you and tell somebody, cut out, you can talk to somebody, say, Pastor, they will stay so good. Cut it out. You know, start weaning yourself from it. Some people just get cold turkey if they don't eat the Kentucky. Well, I have to have this. You do chicken right, I have to have it. Eat in a box. Oh, God. But when you see how they prepare them things and how much oil in it, how much cholesterol is a big piece of lard. And when you leave it for a little day and you, think, and you squeeze that thing and you see the amount of oil running out of it, that is where we consume it. And then we had to end up in general or we had to end up in wherever and they tell you, your, your combustion is high. I went to the doctor once and he said, I said, doctor, my chest is burning liver. He said, what are you eating? I said, he said, you can cheese now. I said, yeah. He said, cut all the cheese and not something. Cut all the cheese. No burning thoughts. You think too much cheese. Watch the cheese. It's a healthy cheese to eat too. You know. An expensive but is the best. It's a healthy flower too, you know. Sister Gemma introduced me to spelt flour. Right, Claude? Claude, let's say China flower. The things that are good for you, Sister, sister um, Sharon, is always more expensive. Amen? So when you see the price... But the healthy stuff, when you go and look at your normal roses, this will have in my hand, yes? You're going for roses. Or whatever flower you like. But if you want to live healthy and you have to eat right and sleep right, most of all, you have to live right. It's not just eating right and exercising. Make sure the main thing is the main thing is staying in the Word of God. The main thing is to stay in the Word of God. 
Once you, once you have a daily diet with the word. And if, you, if you're sick, confess the healing scriptures. Begin to read things on healing. If you're broke, there are scriptures in the Bible that deals with, with, with finance. And as you begin to search the word and as you begin to draw on the word, it strengthens you, it adjusts you, it, it changes your mind, it changes your attitude, it strengthens you, and it helps you to live. Which brings me to my last point, adjusting. You cannot adjust unless you first adjust your life to the word of God. When we adjust, when we adjust ourselves, and adjust our lives to the word of God, we shall have spiritual awakening. Could you imagine all of us sitting here this morning, adjust our diet to the word of God, and become so in tune with what the word of God says, and on fire because of the word of God. We would not have room in this church because we would be so on fire with the word. We would win the loss. We will tell people how good this God is. How good his word is. And we will change our country. We would be empowered because of the word and the spirit of God. And when people come, because you have a handle of the word, you will begin to apply the word to every situation and be encouraged, although they're coming with negative stuff. So my last point says in Luke 9 and 36, adjust for spiritual awakening. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. Means that Moses and Elijah was gone. And Jesus was there with Peter, James, and John. And the Bible says that they kept it secret and they told nobody at that time what they experienced. But we are privileged today because we see, we have, we see what they have experienced. And what they have experienced, we have it to encourage us, to show us that we are privileged people. Some of us may not believe that we are privileged, but I have come to declare to you that we are privileged people. Hey, church. We are about to see a spiritual awakening. Get ready. Get ready for that spiritual awakening. We must be prepared to move when God says move. We must be prepared to share our faith when time comes to share our faith. We must be prepared when God blesses us financially and prospers that we would be willing not to keep it for ourselves but to bless others with it. There is an awakening coming. God is awakening our church. He's awakening the church before he comes. He's awakening. He's, he's stirring up people. He's stirring us to reach the lost. He's stirring us up to reach our country. He's stirring us up to reach the nations. He's stirring us up to change our communities. This is not the time complacency. This is the time for vigilance. This is the time for keen sensitivity. This is the time for action. This is the call for action. Many of us come, came to Christ for self. You know something was bad in my life and you know, I can't make it no more. So I come to Jesus. And Jesus loves us so much. He changed, changed our life. He saved us. And he set us free. But what he said is that the same thing that you receive, I want you to go tell somebody what you receive. And give that person the same opportunity to receive what you have received. And that's all. Your testimony is the best, best message. The best message. The best, if you don't know if you don't know how to share the word, share your testimony. Let me tell you something. 
You are the only Jesus that people will see. So when you share your testimony about how good God is, people will want the God. Let your light so shine so that men, before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Notice they're not glorifying you. They're glorifying your Father in heaven. Folks, this is a season for us to begin to trim our wicks. Are we talking about letting the light so shine? Trim your wick. What do I mean by trimming the wick? Getting into the world, getting hungry for God. Be prepared so that when you come into a situation, you don't have to say, oh God, let me call you, know, let me call this one, yes? <laughs> oh God, hey, this thing happened. Uh, uh, you can pray for that one for me. Ah, no, no, you're in the situation, you pray. But you're in a situation you need, need, you need now. If you practice the word, if you practice and, and practice make what? Permanent. Practice makes permanent. Once you get into the word. Once you're praying and seeking God and staying close to God, whatever you learn in prayer, it stays with you whole day. Whatever you learn in the word, it stays with you for life. I was in a situation since 1987. 1989. So far. I went to a service. I was working once at a time. And the word was, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. As some men call slackness, but is long suffering to us one. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the I still remember. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men call slackness, but is long suffering to us word. Not willing that any should perish, but at all. So if you feel the Lord taking long, he's long suffering. He wanted to happen like that. But could it be that there's something in us that we don't want to let go, that we have to be suffering long? Could it be that people just love sin rather than love God? That he is suffering long, not willing that any should perish. Could it be that people love to horn people? And talk straight up. Could it be that people love to do all kind of whoopsie stuff? I know, I know the whoopsie I want to talk about, but I say whoopsie. Somebody say lasciviousness. Somebody will, what that mean? Whoopsie. Oh, you know what I mean? Could it be that we love the whoopsie what, rather than the worship? Could it be that we love the things of the world rather than the things of God? Could it be that we love easy going stuff than love? Things of God which sometimes takes a little longer. Could it be that we love microwave more than the stove? There are some things that people have on the inside that nobody else knows about that they can mask with a smile that only God knows about that he wants to change. And he's long-suffering. 
not willing that any should perish, but at all should come to repentance. This is the time, gate church, and church at large, for us to trim our wicks. It can happen anytime. The trump could sound tomorrow. Not the president of the United States, but the trump of God shall sound. The trump of God shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the air with him. It could happen any time. It could happen when you dress Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, time to go to work. Woo! Could be driving a car. Can't move off the side of the road. You gone. happen tonight it could happen the next minute it could happen the next hour it could happen anytime he says nobody knows the day nor the hour that's why we have to be prepared we have to be so careful how we live so careful how we carry ourselves because it can happen anytime and some of us have dead loved ones who have died in Christ but we saying we have time. Who say you have time? You could be good today and sick tomorrow and they pick you up and I surrender all. Healthy people dropping down. And you don't know. It could happen to anybody. My friends, I'm preaching hard this morning because I want people to hear the word of God. Live for God. If you're not saved, get saved. If you're not living right, you will get left. Amen. Grandmother and they used to say, friends will carry you. But they ain't bringing you back. This is not the time to follow the ungodly life. Because the ungodly need you. Who's godly? And I thank God that you was in the car. When they was going. That's why everybody reads safe. Because of you. Who accept Christ. And save them. You see something happen. You see something happen. And you wonder, everybody goes, oh good. But because of you, God kept it good. Trim your wicks. Keep your lamps burning. Live for God. Arise, church, arise. And take your place as I conclude. Arise and take your place in your country. Arise and take your place on your workplace. Arise, take your place in your community. Arise and take your place in this place and live for God. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begins with us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? For if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? That's the word of God. This is not the time for us to be playing God and playing church. This is the time for us to be the church. We have a greater responsibility because we know better. Say, so whatever you bind on earth will already be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is already loosed in the heavens. Amen? We are just doing what he has already done. And continually be loosed. 
Wake up, church. Wake up. Touch your neighbor and say, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. No sleeping. Wake up. Come on, folks. Wake up. conclude. I'm just going to restate what I just said. Arise my church. Arise and take your place. Come to me and be refreshed. Come to me, said God, and don't miss out. Come to me. I'm calling you. God is calling us. God is calling us to go out into the fields, the highways. God is calling us. He's making a trumpet call this morning. A, 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 a clarion call us to come unto God. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Gracious, loving, merciful Father, we thank you, O oh God, for doing a new thing in us. Father God, we rest in you, we abide in you, and we stay in you. And Lord, the Spirit of the Lord just asked me to make this call this morning. He says, if there are people here today who don't know Christ, I was about to close and say, you cannot close because he's moving on people's hearts. Those who have never accepted Christ and want to accept Christ, don't be ashamed, don't be God says, don't be ashamed. God says, don't worry, don't fear. He said, this is not the time for you to fear. This is the time for you to respond. If you do not know Christ as your Savior and Lord, God wants you to come now to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. And the second call is for those who need encouragement to go forward, who need encouragement to go to be a witness, who need encouragement to serve God, to hear from God, to live for God, to be a vessel of honor unto God. Those, this, is, this, this is a call for those who want to be a disciple for Christ. If those two categories of people are here this morning, make your way to the altar. Let the Lord lay hands on you and bless you. Come with your hands all lifted and your hearts ready. Ready to receive from heaven. Ready to receive from God. Just just jump out of your seat and come quickly. Let God be. Let God arise in your life. And let his enemies be scattered over you. Let God scatter the enemy. Amen. Amen. Healing. God says, now I'm healing you. God says, now I'm setting you free. God says, hope, hope, faith, love, everything. You begin to understand things that you never thought that you would understand. Now receive of this power now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for setting her free, making her whole. Using her for your honor and for your glory. Be magnified in her, O oh God. Be magnified in her. In the name of Jesus. It's the path you see of the power of God. And let the power of God fill your heart now in the name of Jesus. And receive the power of God now. Now, yokes are destroyed, principalities and powers are broken. And receive. Now, in the name, let the joy of the Lord be your strength, and let faith arise now. Thank you for joining us on this program today. I hope that it has been inspiring and fulfilling to you this morning. I ask that you join us every second and fourth Sunday at 4:30 a.m. on this program. Please be reminded that our services begin at 8.30 a.m. and we also begin praise and worship at 9 a.m. 
We are located at number 236 Eastern Main Road in Barataria. Thank you.